guys, it's Robin, our Silent Crafts, and welcome to my craft room. In one of my recent Whip It Wednesday videos, I showed you one of the little zipper coin pouches that I made in the shape of a stocking. And I said I'd go ahead and show you guys how I put it together. This is one of those gifts that are, it's really easy to make once you figure out how to put the zipper in, which it's the same as this one as it is in any zip pouch. But if you're new to zippers, once you kind of get your mind around putting the zipper in, then it works out really easy. If you have in less than an hour before you have to go somewhere and you need a little extra gift, these are perfect to make. You can easily make one of these in less than an hour. If, as I said, if you're really new to sewing with zippers, you might have to go a little slow and take your time. But I'm going to go ahead and put up in the iCard. I have a few different videos on how to put in a zipper. It'll give you more details than what I'm going to give you in this video. Take your time, pause the video as you go, and you'll be able to go ahead and make a zip pouch. Maybe you might want to make two. Make one for a practice one and make one regular one. But if you're already good at putting in zippers, it shouldn't take you very long at all to make one of these. I'm going to use this embossed I don't think it's actual velvet, but it has that velvet feel. So I'm just gonna call it an embossed fabric. It is a little slippery. I have two pieces cut out. You can go ahead and search online for a, in a coloring book for a stocking outline. If you just kind of like Google stocking outline, you'll come up with different shapes and sizes. You can enlarge it or make it smaller based on your printer settings and stuff like that. Just go ahead and find a stocking shape that you like. Now remember for this size, I made it so that you can put some money in it or you can also put a gift card. So you wanna make sure that your space up here between your, you know, your opening here is going to be large enough to be able to fit a gift card into it. I have my outside fabrics. I chose this burgundy for the lining. And I picked a zipper. My zipper just happens to match my lining. I didn't have anything that would match the outside of my pouch, but I thought this one went pretty good and it's a little nod to what's on the inside. These are a little bit thicker, so I decided that I'm not gonna use any type of batting, so I'm not gonna quilt these, and I'm also not gonna use any type of interfacing. If you're just using regular quilter's cotton, like I did with the Coca-Cola one, I went ahead and just did some quick little straight line quilting down it. I quilted the front and the back, I quilted them separately. I didn't put the backing on it at all. It's just the fabric with the batting and I just quilted it all together. So quick and simple. But if you're using if you're using a thicker fabric, like if you're using denim or if you're using some type of a velvet or a pre-quilted material, you can just go ahead and use that. And if you want it to just be thin, and this is really easy to fold up and put somewhere, tuck away. I wanna call it like flimsy. It's not weak flimsy, but it's just very thin and flexible because it doesn't have anything to hold its shape. I did try them with just some stabilizer, but I really preferred the ones that had the quilting in it because it's a stocking and I make my stockings, I quilt them. So I kind of thought I wanted it to be just like a stocking. But as I said, this one's thick enough, I'm not gonna quilt it at all. So I have my stocking template that I cut out two pieces of front and the back. And remember when you cut them out that you need to have them facing in two different directions. So when you lay your first template down and trace around it, flip it over so you trace it around the second, or trace it with right sides together and cut them both out at the same time. My lining is a solid, so I didn't have to worry about it. I just went ahead and put my pattern on, traced around it, because both sides look the same. I'm using a nylon zipper so that I can go ahead and sew right over it. It doesn't matter the size. I like to keep mine a little bit larger so that it's easy for me to stitch around and I can just trim off these metal ends and not have to worry about stitching around them and moving things around. I'm gonna start out by laying my first piece of my outer fabric. I'm gonna put it right sides down. I'm gonna put it so my stocking goes to the right because that's the way I like them to go. You can put it any way you want. And the only thing you're gonna notice right side and right or wrong way is the way your zipper is. So I'm gonna put the zipper tab so that's on the left. That way when you're opening up the zipper, most people open it right-handed. If you're making it for a left-handed person, you can go ahead and flip it. But generally they go from the right to the left for the little zippers. I wanna put this right sides down so that the teeth of the zipper where the pull is are touching my, my velveteen type fabric here, my embossed fabric. I'm gonna put them right sides together. I noticed when I cut out my lining that 
I, I made it a little bit, somehow I managed to make my lining just a little bit smaller. I think when I put them right sides together that the piece of fabric that was underneath it might have been just a little bit short. But you know what? It's a really a good thing to have your lining just a little bit shorter. I'm going to show you a trick in a little bit when we get to stitching this. That'll help you so you don't have... I don't have any bunching of my lining fabric inside. It's all smooth. I don't feel any extra fabric in here. I can just feel that this is a little thicker because it does have the batting in there on two sides. But it doesn't have any bunched up, folded up fabric in the toe or down in the heel. And I'm gonna show you how I did that. Everything here is basically right sides together. I have my outer fabric facing up. I have my zipper with the right side facing down. So those are touching. And now I have my other part of my lining. You see how the toes line up? These are right sides together. You wouldn't want to add your lining if it looked like this because you want to have your toe to line up. That is like the hardest part of making this little zipper pouch and that's not hard at all. It's easy just to make sure everything's lined up. If you're just starting out and you're beginning, you might want to take this over to the sewing machine and with your zipper foot, go ahead and sew this part on. So you sew the zipper to the outside and then bring your lining in and go ahead and stitch it again. If you're used to sewing with different layers like this, we're just going to go ahead and put clips on it, making sure everything is lined up at the top so that when we take it over to the sewing machine, it's all nice and level and even. Let me go ahead and stitch this down. I'll be right back. Okay, now we need to go ahead and get the other side put on so that we have an actual pouch. Now I have the lining here on the back. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my other lining fabric and I'm going to put it right sides up so that the right sides are going to be touching. And once again, the pouch, the stocking pouch makes it really easy. We're just going to line everything up like this. Right sides together of my outer fabric. Again, I wanna line them up all along the top. I wanna to start by lining up my outside right here. So that lines up. Now I already know that my lining is not going to fit perfectly because I cut it off just a little bit off in size, but it's going to be fine in the long run. It's just a small amount. If I cut it really bad so that it was really way off, I would just go ahead and cut a new piece of fabric but that little bit is not going to matter. So I've gone ahead, since my fabric is a little bit slippery and stuff, I just went ahead and pinned the front on, and then I can flip it over. I'm gonna line up my lining. And remember, mine is just a little bit off. Yours might be a little bit off at this stage too, if things moved around while you were stitching your zipper in. I'm going to take it back over to my sewing machine and stitch along here. And this is what I'm going to end up. I'm going to have my, my stockings going to look like this. It's kind of almost like, you know, it reminds me almost of a dog bone if there happened to be two of them. But both of my toes are both facing up in the same direction. And I also went through and I top stitched right along the top. This is going to help keep the lining from getting into your zipper when you're using it. Sometimes if you pick up a pouch at like one of the Dollar Trees or something, the lining as you're using it might creep up into the zipper and then it gets stuck and then you guys know how much of a hassle that is. So before we go to the next step, I wanna make sure that I bring my zipper into past the halfway mark. So, cause if your zipper's out here, when we sew our pouch together, you're gonna to have that on the outside and you're gonna to have to do a lot of unpicking or start all over. Now, just like you're gonna see in the tutorials I have listed up in the iCard, we're gonna go ahead and line everything up like this. We're gonna stitch around, but we're gonna leave. You have two options here. I've done it both ways, where I've left my turning spot right here on this straight edge on this side, or also on the bottom. Now I did this one on this side, but I found that sometimes it was a little bit too close to the zipper for me and I had to leave a smaller hole. But on the next rounds that I was doing, and I, because I made several of these last, the other couple weeks ago, I went ahead and I left my opening here on the foot. That way it gave me more room to turn everything out. 
Now, of course, I only have about this amount of space here, so I've just brought it in a little bit, and I still found that that gave me enough room to go ahead and turn the stocking out. Because when you're doing it on the side, while it looks like it's the same amount of space, it does get harder to stitch that hole up afterwards because the zipper's right here. So after we flip everything back and we get it ready to close up that hole, with it being on the bottom, it's easier to pull out of the stocking and to go ahead and stitch that up. See, I did this one here, but if you had to stitch it up on the side, you have this mess right here to deal with, and that kind of gets in the way when you're trying to use the sewing machine. But if it's on the bottom, it's easy to go ahead and pop in there. After I stitch this together, I'll be able to show you easily on how I changed things around when I was stitching it to make it so that the lining lays in there nice and flat. Now, I'm not sure if you can see, but when I stitched my stocking, I did about 3 eighths of an inch, half an inch, all the way around, and I just followed the outline of the stocking. I did have mine shift just a little bit. You can try to put a bunch of clips or pins, but I'm just going to go ahead and trim that up in the seam allowance. But when I got to the actual stocking, I started down here off the edge like I do. You see how large my seam allowance is here? I just made sure I this way I don't have any of that extra seam allowance touching the I don't want this seam allowance to be touching this seam allowance. That's where you get that extra bulk. But when I got back up towards the zipper, I wanted to make sure that I went right to the same 3 eighths of an inch. You want to have the area about an inch from either side of the zipper to be the same seam allowance. You don't want to try to come in here. You know, you don't want to keep it nice and short here because then it's going to be hard when you do the zipper and you open up the pouch and stuff. So I just went ahead and I took a big chunk and I followed it all the way around. And then even with the heel, I made sure I took a larger seam allowance there. So then just like usual, I like to trim, well, you have to trim that zipper off because that's there, but I like to trim just a little bit of a larger dig into the seam allowance. So it's, I try to leave at least a quarter of an inch there. You can go ahead and stitch a few times over this while you're trimming, while you're sewing it onto the sewing machine. Same thing here. I gotta be careful that I don't get too close to the seam allowance because I still wanna have at least a quarter inch. But this allows me to take that extra bulk of the zipper out of that seam allowance area. Now to get everything to lay nice, anytime you have a curve that goes in or a big curve that goes out, you wanna go ahead and clip into your seam allowance there just to let the fabric ease. Just do a couple there. And then you can go all the way around. Sometimes if you've left enough of a seam allowance, you can just go ahead and use your pinking shears, which is a good reason to leave a larger than just a straight up quarter of an inch. This way you can trim it down to that quarter of an inch. And your pinking shears will help those curves lay nicely. I still do end up putting those little bit of a clip in those, those inside curves there just, just to make it lay nice. And then down here, now this is where I'm gonna still just go ahead and down to that quarter of an inch. This one is just two layers of cotton fabric, so I don't have to worry too much about that. Plus it's in the lining, so it's gonna lay a little bit better. And you're not gonna see it or feel it as much. It eases out all that extra bulk. Now you can go ahead and trim this down where we went ahead and left that extra bit for turning inside and sewing the end over. I don't trim it down as close. I just want to trim off just a little bit. Now, as you notice, I did not put a keychain in this one. If you wanted to put a keychain, you would just go ahead and put it right next to your zipper here. I go about an inch and a half down, at least an inch, maybe an inch and a half down. Put in some type of a, I used ribbon on this one. As you can see, I just add that little piece of ribbon with this little keychain on it. You could put a little wrist strap on it if you want, or just some little bit of a small piece. These I'm just gonna leave as straight up coin pouches and not to need to have the keychain for them. You can use your hemostats or just stick your fingers in there. I use my crochet hooks just to 
bring everything out, pop out those seams so that everything is going to lay flat and you're not going to have any tucks in your fabric. You want to make sure you have that nice stocking shape. Put my thumb on the zipper here and I just push up with my finger to bring this up. You don't want to push it up hard because you don't want to actually bust that seam. And this one's going to come up fine on its own. Now all I have to do is stitch the bottom of my stocking closed and I'll have my nice little coin pouch or my gift card holder. Just take this over to my sewing machine. I'll pop in the seams there so I can stitch straight across. Because of the way I started at the off of the fabric and stitched on and then at the end I stitched off, you see it just kind of folds into there nicely because you have that line of stitching. But if you make your seam allowance here, if you trimmed off too much, it's going to pop your fabric, your threads on that side there and it's going to make it so that all those little threads will pop up and show here. This way it keeps it nice and neat. You can go ahead and give it a good press and then I'm just going to go stitch it an eighth of an inch from the edge. Went ahead and just stitched that hole closed. I tuck my stocking back into my lining back into my stocking. And because I took off so much extra on such a large seam allowance, my stocking's not gonna go all the way to the, my lining's not gonna go all the way to the bottom of my stocking. It's also not gonna get bunched up in the heel or the toe. And that's gonna allow, it just, it just, I don't know if anyone really notices but me, but it bothers me and I just like the way it doesn't have that bunched up feeling. There's, there's no extra here or in the toes. It's nice and flat. If you're using any type of fabric, you, I could put a pressing sheet on top of this and give it a nice press so it'll have that nice lovely shape to it. And there we go. You put any little treats in it, you can put candy in it, the small candy canes, gift cards, money. You can even put jewelry, necklaces, earrings, little boxes of stuff, little tie clips. You can put a lot of different presents and use it into this. That way you have a reusable wrapping and you're not actually putting it in like wrapping paper. They'll be like, oh, look, I got a little stocking. And then they're like, oh, I feel something in there. And then they'll have their money or their gift card or whatever. If you put a little loop on it, you can hang it from the tree as an ornament. So a quick and easy project, a nice way to tuck a little cash or a gift card in instead of just having one of those little envelopes or handing it to them in a card or something. I like to have that little extra handmade touch so it's more of a, let's face it, a lot of people it's just better to give a gift card to, and myself including. My kids tend to give me a gift card because that way they know I can just go to Joanne Fabrics and pick up what I want and anytime I need something I'll have that gift card with that cash on it for me than them just trying to figure out exactly what times of batting or fabric I might want. Now, my kids do surprise me every now and then, and they do pick up different things, but if they want to get me something crafty-wise, they like to give me a gift card. So teenagers, gift cards. You can put earbuds in it for them, little headphones and stuff. So I think these, these little zipper stocking pouches are a really great gift idea. So thanks for hanging out with me again this week, and I'll see you guys later. Bye!